Today we'll be working on a Galien Kruger 400 RP base amp. Let's see what's inside. Alright, so today we have this Galien Kruger 400 RB base amp we're going to work on, take a look at today. I've acquired it from a local musician in the area and it's supposed to be operable but there's complaints about some static and noise it's likely the potentiometers so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a speaker to it and I'm going to attach my function generator to it run a fundamental frequency of about one kilohertz into it while I rotate all the knobs and see where the static is coming from then I'll open it up take a look at the components see if they're all okay um, it is an older unit, so it likely be proper to check the uh, capacitors and things of that nature. Then I'll proceed to uh, clean the pots with some comp compressed air or even some electronics duster uh, if it's so needed. But for right now, all I'm going to do is run some signal through it and see exactly uh, where these noises are coming from. So let's take a look at that. All right, so if you take a look up there, I've got my function generator hooked up to the input of the base amplifier. I've got it going at a fundamental frequency of one kilohertz at a voltage of 0.3 volts. And the reason why I have it at 0.3 volts is because that's about as much voltage that comes out of a guitar pickup or a bass pickup. So that gives us a realistic representation of the input signal. Now, of course, this is 0.3 volts of constant voltage, which differs from the output of a guitar or a bass guitar, which is always going to be fluctuating depending on how hard or soft the player is playing the strings. So in actuality, a guitar pickup could, put it, could have an output of 0.1 all the way up to 0.5 maybe even higher depending on, let's say if someone's slapping a bass or doing something really aggressive. Uh, 0.3 is just a, a good in-between to test uh, equipment at. So, what we're going to do from here is go back to our amplifier and start turning some knobs and see what comes out of it. So I'll start by raising the volume knob. Of course, before you put the signal in and you turn on the amplifier, you want to turn down the volume knob, especially the master volume, right? You want a clean start, and we want to see what happens. So here we go. I'm starting to hear a little bit of signal being produced. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty faint. I'm still raising the volume. I don't hear any noise, but I'm not getting that much signal either. I just went up to full power. So there's probably a volume knob on the preamp side. And there is, and it's right here. So I'll raise that volume up as well. So I'll put this maybe at a quarter and then start raising the input volume so I can get just some decent audio so I can hear what's happening. So I got, I have the uh, preamp volume, maybe about one o'clock. And I'm not hearing any static, which is nice. So usually when this stuff happens, when you're hearing, when someone complains about there being static in an amplifier, it's typically gonna be on the pots that are used the most. So the volume knobs are typically the volume or gain knobs are typically the ones that are going to make the most um, noise because those are the ones that get cycled the most. But the master is not making much noise at all and it actually has a really good feel on it. There is a boost control next to the master so let's see how that sounds. There we go. There's some static there.
So the boost control would be our first culprit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's check the EQ. So treble, treble's got some. Yep. This is the mid-range. Mid-range seems pretty clean. And of course, we'll probably, obviously, if you're going through the work of doing all this, you're going to clean all the pots, but um, you just want to define which ones are the most problematic. This is a low mid. I don't know if it needs a button to be engaged or anything like that. It's pretty clean. The mids are clean. Bass. Bass is clean. So it's really our boost control and our treble that are making the most noise. So those will be uh, kind of our focal points. And the switches. So on these two switches, this is why I checked that. So again, obviously, like I was saying in the beginning of this video, a primary purpose of doing this was to check the potentiometers, but you want to cycle the switches as well and see what's going on there. And it became evident that there is some static. So those would need to be cleaned out as well. But all in all, it's not bad. I've definitely seen much worse, um, especially in amplifiers at this age. But uh, from here, I'm just going to power it down. Take the function generator off, get inside of there, take a look around, get some shots of the innards, and um, get my air compressor ready, um, and just seeing what we're dealing with. Um, of course, we're going to look for any kind of corrosion and things like that, um, but in this case, when you have sounds like we're getting, it's typically um, just dust, dust on the wipers of the... Uh, potentiometers so I'll open it up and we'll take it from there so I've got the cover off now one of the first things I'm going to do before I put my hands in there is check the uh, high voltage the B plus voltage so if you see those purple things sticking up there uh, kind of in the uh, right hand corner almost next to the transformer you'll see the uh, power capacitors that's the power bank of the amplifier, so I'm going to check to see if there's any voltage there. Of course, this wouldn't be as high a voltage as, let's say, a tube amp um, that I work on quite frequently. But there's still enough voltage uh, to be dangerous in a uh, solid-state amplifier. So I'll check that out, and then I'll proceed at looking over the parts and examining the potentiometers. All right, so I have it hooked up to my multimeter. And as you can see, it's reading 0 0.8857, 56 now. So it's basically empty, so there's no voltage in there. And I have it on plug, so I don't have the AC um, plug in there either. So it's safe to work on. So now we'll take a closer look inside and see what we're dealing with. All right, so we are now inside of the amplifier. Uh, so we can see here, this is the power section, the power output section, that is. So we see that we have the uh, power transistors here. There are four power transistors. And we have the capacitor bank, and that's where you get your B plus from. You also see something that's kind of funny here is the, uh, the um, bridge rectifier here um, and the way it's placed. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's, it's pretty... It's pretty funny the way they have it. Uh, they have the legs kind of um, spread out going from front to back uh, because they wanted to place it on this metal piece, which is going to provide some heat sinking. But it's just a kind of funny, very much a very kind of like a DIY kind of way of mounting a... Um, bridge rectifier 
um, not commonly done that way, so that's kind of unusual. Another thing that's kind of unusual and it's almost a kind of a DIY thing, if you see this here, and I don't know if this was done after the fact, or if someone worked on it and did this, which is not a bad idea to do, but um, definitely not common for something that's coming out of a factory, where you see this piece of electrical tape and a piece of paper that's over this transformer, and they're doing this uh, to cover up the possibility of there being any contact between the top of the chassis and these leads because as you can see if you can see that there's a there's a little bit of exposure of the leads right there uh, past this heat shrink so someone put a little piece of kind of like index card paper there to uh, protect it it's actually a good idea but other than those things, those are kind of just an overview of the, the amplifier. What I'm seeing here, and I don't think it can be displayed on the camera, but there's there's some cobwebs in the amplifier. Again, it's an older amplifier. Um, like it hasn't been opened up very much either. So what I'm going to do is vacuum it out first, get these cobwebs out of there, and then take a look at the potentiometers. So I'll vacuum it out and flip this around and then we'll take a look at the uh, potentiometers. All right, now that's our potentiometer bank. So this will be the master volume, the boost, vo the boost control, and the treble is here. And if we recall, it was the um, boost control and the treble that were making the most noise. And I believe a little bit maybe on this, this here, the um, preamp volume control and the switches here. So these are going to be our main factors. I am going to take it into another room to uh, blast it with some compressed air, probably at or upwards of uh, 100 PSI. And then I'm going to test it. If that doesn't work, then I might have to use some duster here. The reason why I'm using compressed air and the reason why I want to test it before using the duster is because um, if anybody's familiar, the duster is wet. Now, duster does a great job at eating away corrosion and dust and scratchy pots and all that. But the thing about the duster is that oftentimes, it will affect the uh, friction and the feel of your potentiometers. Now, one of the reasons why audio technicians, audio designers, audio manufacturers uh, go into spending more money for what's called an audio pot, an audio potentiometer, is for the resistance, the feel of it as you go back and forth. It's preferred in an audio setting to have one that has a little bit of resistance, so it feels kind of smooth. You don't want it to where it feels really loose, right? Because you want there to be some kind of a good, a good control uh, when you're sweeping it. So you want there to be some, some, some uh, resistance there. Uh, you don't want it to be so slick, right? As if you get a, just a straight linear pot, then they're going to be pretty loose. Uh, so the reason why you go further into getting an audio pot, one of the reasons is, is the feel of it, right? So it has that kind of tension. If you see me rolling it around here, how it has that kind of smooth resistance there. But again, if I blast that with duster, then some of that is likely to go away because the duster because it pretty much lubricates it, it's going to make it a little bit slick. So you might lose some of that resistance, which I don't want to do, but of course, um, getting rid of the scratchy pots is the objective. If you have to sacrifice some of the resistance, then that's just what has to be done. Again, some of them aren't, some of them are looser than others, like this one here in particular, this, uh, the preamp volume, 
is probably about the loosest of all of them. Now the um, the boost pot has the most tension on it, has the most friction. But at any rate, that's the situation. So I'm going to blast it with some uh, compressed air. Make sure to get these switches. Um, and then I'm going to test it now. The deal is, and what's going to be a little bit difficult here is to try to get underneath. So when I say I'm going to blast the potentiometers, really is what I'm looking for is an opening, right? So these are closed back potentiometers, but typically potentiometers have some openings underneath. And that's where I'm going to be trying to blast most of the air. But try to get access to that wiper. Now, if I really can't get access from there and that doesn't work, then I might have to remove the whole board. And actually, in fact, if I were to dust this and spray it, then I would, in fact, have to take the knobs off, uh, screw off the potentiometers, and then take out this, this board uh, to do a more effective job on it. But for now, I'm just going to spray it once and see if that does any better, see how much progress we gain from just just spraying it out one time uh, with some compressed air, testing it, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've given it one cleaning, blasted it with some compressed air. It did get a lot better, but there's still a little bit of scratchiness, uh, particularly on the uh, boost pot, um, and a little bit, now the treble's pretty clean. The treble's clean, but it's really just the boost pot that's uh, still scratchy, and the, the uh, these switches here so I'm going to give it one more blast of uh, compressed air and then throw a little bit of duster in there uh, let it dry out compress it again and then uh, should be ready clean and plan nice so that's what's going on all right so I'm back from doing two cycles of duster and compressed air it's significantly better there's still a little static coming from this middle switch here, which ultimately might have to be replaced, and I'll suggest that to the owner. But otherwise, things are going quite well. Remember, the most static that we had was on the boost pot and the treble. And it has ceased to make any noise. So here we go again with our one kilohertz signal. Turn that up. This is the boost knob. So you can see again, the boost is not making any noise. Back cleaned up. And you know, I'm actually getting back a little bit of resistance after it's dried. So again, remember when I was referring to earlier that the duster, one of the disadvantages of using the duster is that it'll lubricate the pot so it tends to lose some of the friction. Uh, but I think after it dries, some of the resistance does come back a little bit. It might not be, it might not come back uh, to the way it was originally, but a lot of it will, uh, will come back. So again, we're getting no static. And that's all, that's all we want. There seems to be, there's a little bit still on this mid-range pot, which I might take another shot at. But the treble's pretty clean. And like I said, some of these, that one in particular, this middle one is popping pretty bad. So that one, I might take another shot at it or, you know, suggest it to be replaced. Um, unfortunately, those switches are hard to get to internally to really clean them out very well. So oftentimes you just have to uh, replace them completely. But that's about it. Uh, that's, that's the job there. Um, everything else is good. It's going through signal all right. Uh, some scratchy pots, um, compressed air and some duster will clean it right up. Again, if you have any more um, troubles, if there's some static that's not uh, leaving the unit, then you might want to try to clean it more thoroughly again, or you just end up replacing the part. Like I said, in this case, this switch, out of everything, would be this switch that would that would have to be replaced, um, most likely. But again, that is the uh, 
Galeon Kruger 400 RB base amp. Thanks for watching.